Hello. All right, so today I'm looking at an email from somebody that calls me her crazy recovery auntie. <laughs> um, she is wondering how you deal with eating more than others whilst responding to extreme hunger, also dealing with other people's diets. Um, I, um, I find it hard to eat more and I doubt whether my hunger is valid when I'm eating a lot more than other people. Um, this person's actually also, she, she mentioned somebody else that she's worried about. Uh, I'm going to focus on that question, how do you deal with eating more when um, you're responding to hunger? Um, well, it's, what has always worked in my favour is that I don't really give a shit about what other people think. So that that thing that actually i think made made things a lot easier for me um that's a personal trait and i guess that a lot of people don't have that um despite the fact that i didn't actually sorry stinky's just wrecking a box if you can hear that um despite the fact that i didn't really give a shit what other people think thought anorexia gave a shit about me eating more than other people which i guess is what a lot of us feel um i have a theory as to why that is so if you sort of um, know that I sort of think about anorexia from a very biological sense of view, uh, point of view, and I think of it as an evolutionary adaption to um, early humans would have had to move away from famine situations to migrate a lot. So I think that for those of us with the genetics of it, when we go into energy deficit, our brains, that genetics sort of like sparks this response in our brain, which is to eat very little and move a lot um, to migrate. Anyway. So I think that say if if that's if you are in a, your brain thinks that you're in a famine time or even if you were say like thousands of years ago go into famine got anorexia genetics so you want to move and your your whole tribe is migrating Dave stop it um, and and so your whole tribe is migrating and it it would be quite an urgent sort of situation and also if there's a lot of people and there's not very much food you might be trying to move or migrate towards where the buffalo are or where the food is and then you know like you don't want to get left behind so if you all do stop and eat for a bit like you want to just eat as little as you can and then get going again you don't want to be the person that sat there getting left behind because you were spending too long eating or taking you know, like more food than other people, that would be an evolutionary disadvantage to you. So I think that there's this weird thing that goes in our brains when we are eating with other people. It's kind of like you have to be the person that eats the, le the least and kind of like moves the most, especially. I, I had this weird thing, like if I was at a dinner table with some other people, right? Um, say if someone got up to go and get themselves a drink from the kitchen, I would feel like I had to move. Like I had to get up and make an excuse to go and get something. That's how competitive I was about movement, which is, that's really weird. And that's that's way more to do than just like, oh, it must, might have burnt point, point, point five of a calorie to go and get that glass of water. So I've got to do the same thing. It's way more than that. It just felt like this thing, like that person moved, I have to move too. And that's, that's just really weird. And it, is the, it was the same sort of thing with eating less than other people for me. For me, it wasn't because I was worried that other people were judging me. No, I didn't give a shit. It was just more like I felt like I was inferior if I ate more. So anyway, the thing is, is that in order to recover from anorexia, you have to eat more than other people. You've just got to. So regardless of where you believe that urge to eat less than other people comes from, you've got to eat more than other people. Because if you have been under eating, you're not going to get better by trying to eat less than other people. Or you're not even really going to get better by eating normally. You have to eat large amounts of food. Like it's where you find balance. You've been eating small amounts of food. You have to eat large amounts of food. So you got to get over that and I think that this is where the skill of just sort of being able to block out thoughts block out your head and just bulldoze through and put the food in your mouth chew and swallow that was kind of rude <laughs> cats can be quite rude that's why I like them <laughs> um yeah food in your mouth chew and swallow and you, you've got to do the opposite basically of everything your brain wants you to do so if your brain is telling you it is wrong for you to eat more than other people at the table, 
then you make sure you are the person that eats the most. Even if, you, even if you're not that hungry, you make sure, because you have to teach your brain that, no, brain, thank you very much. That is not a threat to my survival suite more than other people. And, you know, some of us do. I'm a big, I eat more than other people pretty much all the time. I also eat really fast. My natural rate of eating is very fast. And people could psychoanalyze that as much as you want. You know what, it's just because I like to eat fast. Get over it. Um, when I had anorexia, I had to eat really slow so that I didn't eat more than other people. And that was weird for me. And it was also just very um, tedious and I hate eating slow. It just feels wrong. And now, you know, I just had to get over that and let myself eat fast and let myself eat to hunger, which even when I was in recovery meant I was eating so much more than other people. And even now, usually means I'm eating more than other people. You know what? Who gives a shit? My body's healthy, I'm healthy, and I'm happy.